Welcome to the second episode of Healthcare Matters. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic, cancer care. We will reflect on some of the key challenges our patients are facing in Bulgaria. We will reflect also how European collaboration, European framework and initiatives like the European Cancer Beating Plan and the European Mission on Cancer can help us locally here in Bulgaria. It's a great pleasure and honor to host today Associate Professor Arapajev, someone who's very passionate about supporting cancer patients, someone who's very passionate about educating young oncologists and collaborating beyond the country for a better cancer care. Warm welcome, Dr. Arapajev. It's a great honor to host you here today. Thank you for dedicating the time. And let me start by asking you, how are you today? Thank you very much, uh, Hisham, for uh, inviting me. Um, I feel quite well um, and this is uh, a very comfortable place and I'm, I'm really honoured being your uh, second guest in, in this initiative. Uh, congratulations for having this series of interview. I believe it changed the uh, landscape uh, of uh, healthcare in Bulgaria. Thank you. If we start to reflect on some of the key challenges our cancer patients are facing in Bulgaria, and how can we address them to improve the cancer care pathways? Very good question. And challenges uh, is a very good word for um, the situation with cancer patients uh, in Bulgaria, but I, would, I wouldn't say only in Bulgaria, because challenges uh, in front of cancer patients and cancer care are elsewhere in Europe. But uh, coming back to Bulgaria, um, I believe that um, cancer patients need to see um, that we have a very sustainable care about them, uh, that we are very well prepared according to the international standards, international treatment protocols. Um, I, I have a feeling that right now uh, the biggest challenge for uh, cancer patients in Bulgaria is to find the right path, pathway to the uh, specialized hospitals where they, uh, they can get the, the, most, um, the best professional um, uh, treatment for, for their particular disease. Unfortunately, in Bulgaria, there are a lot of problems, and we have to say this word, a lot of problems with uh, access to innovative treatment, with uh, uh, complexity of treatment. Um, there, there's some noticeable shortage of uh, uh, resources like uh, specialists in medical oncology, nurses uh, working in, in um, oncology clinics. So I might say that challenges are a few, but as far as there is a strong will in the community here in Bulgaria, and I'm not talking about medical oncologists, uh, I'm talking about radiation oncologists, about healthcare specialists, about patient organization, as well as politician and government, we will have the strength to overcome these challenges. Uh, I like your comprehensive overview and the reflection. Thank you for that. But you mentioned at the beginning, Dr. Arabajev, Europe. I'm curious to know your reflections on the European Cancer Beating Plan and how that can support our local cancer patients as well. Um, European Beating Cancer Plan is a, a fantastic initiative of uh, European Commission um, about uh, beating cancer and reducing the burden of cancer uh, in all member states uh, of the Union. It's been introduced a while ago and um, in the plan uh, be, in this plan, uh, a lot of um, major areas of improvement been outlined, like uh, prevention, screening, um, uh, adequate treatment, innovative treatment, as well as uh, uh, quality of life and palliative care for uh, patients with uh, uh, with cancer. Uh, basically, uh, this is the backbone of. Uh, uh, of uh, all uh, cancer-related activities uh, at the European level, but also, as you mentioned, um, European Beating Cancer Plan uh, m is used for uh, um, building up uh, national control cancer plans. So, from, from this point, um, this is the guiding document 
Um, it's a rather political document, uh, not a very precise document, but political document which frames uh, all the actions and uh, all the initiatives which need to be performed at the European level and gives uh, freedom for each member state to adapt their national control plans according to the specific specificity of, uh, of each uh, country. Uh, European Beating Cancer Plan is uh, a very important uh, initiative and uh, is very well supported by uh, uh, European Commission. And um, I'm, I'm happy to say uh, to you, although I'm, I'm uh, pretty sure that you're aware, that there is another initiative that I'm very actively working with, and this is the Mission on Cancer. Mission on Cancer uh, is an initiative introduced in 2021, and the main goal of this, um, this mission is to uh, improve life of uh, more than 3 million people uh, in European Union who are suffering from cancer or their relatives. And how mission uh, cooperates with European Beating Cancer Plan? The mission uh, provides expertise and uh, provides guidance how European Beating Cancer Plan needs to be executed at a national level. And I'm very happy to share with you that uh, since September last year, I've been uh, elected as a board member uh, of Mission and Cancer to the European, uh, to the European Commission and I'm actively working toward uh, implementing all the out outlined action as in um, uh, European Beating Cancer Plan, as well as in the implementation plan of the Mission on Cancer. It's a very complex relation between both initiatives, um, and I'm really happy that I have a, a good eye and hands-on, uh, uh, at least in, in the Mission uh, on Cancer part. Thank you, Dr. Arabajev, and great also that you have established the link between the European Cancer Beating Plan and the European uh, Mission on Cancer. Right. Maybe my question now would be how to take that further in Bulgaria? How those great European framework and opportunity for collaboration can reflect positively on us locally in Bulgaria? Thank you very much for this question and mentioning uh, National uh, Control Cancer Plan in, uh, for Bulgaria. We are lucky to share with everyone uh, that Bulgaria adopted uh, our own uh, National Control Cancer Plan uh, beginning of this year uh, and um, we are not anymore uh, one of the least countries uh, in European Union without such. So from this point congratulations to those who uh, created this plan and for those who adopted the plan. Of course uh, as a political document it still needs to be um, improved in some areas or uh, further discussion to, uh, to go uh, on it. But nevertheless, we have the document and we can start doing some preparatory work to be able to meet expectations of this plan and to set up um, uh, actions uh, toward reaching the goals set, set in a national control cancer plan. Um, it's really good. Uh, Probably um, it's an adoptive, but it's really good that we accept it at a bit later stage, at a, a bit uh, later than the rest of uh, other member states, because uh, while um, uh, autos prepare this uh, plan for Bulgaria, probably they take the best practices uh, out of other uh, member states' uh, control cancer plans. So I believe that ours uh, is pretty well structured. Uh, and uh, one of the biggest benefit of our uh, control cancer plan is that we also put a financial uh, frame. Um, we outlined some um, budget uh, for activities outlined in the uh, national control cancer plan. So we are ready to suggest to the government uh, how much it will cost to meet and to perform all the actions um, mentioned in this plan. For example, there is a, um, a stable budget for uh, um, uh, screening programs, for preventive programs, uh, for uh, uh, quality, improving quality of life of cancer patients. So 
once the discussion starts in, uh, uh, in, in more concrete uh, and more concrete actions are outlined, we have even financial frame, financial um, uh, calculations, how we are going to uh, execute all this, this plan. I like how you highlighted on the learning curve that we can learn from other European countries and also the, the clear invitation how leaders can really support an execution of the local cancer right. control plan. Maybe I would be curious to know if you have any message to policymakers, to healthcare organizations in Bulgaria, how they can support more in, in, in like improving cancer care pathway in the country. Uh, this is a probably one of the most crucial questions uh, about uh, uh, which will outline the, the future of this plan and the future of cancer care in Bulgaria. Um, it, it must be clearly said that uh, all the action uh, put in, in this uh, control cancer plan cannot be uh, executed or realized by a single entity or uh, a single organization. And definitely this plan requires a kind of unification of major of all stakeholders who are responsible for uh, performing tasks uh, and actions in the plan. Um, in the plan they are uh, pretty well recorded, so uh, they are pretty visible. We just need to initiate an uh, open discussion between all these parties, between patient organization, non-profitable, non-governmental organization, government itself, as well as scientific organization and individual uh, specialists in oncology in, uh, or, in the, or other individuals. And as soon as we start discussing uh, about about this plan as soon as we start gathering each other on, on one table if, if my say now this will uh, guarantee the success of, uh, of those actions uh, which are uh, in, in this particular plan and the most important thing right now I believe are uh, prevention and screening because my opinion as a medical oncologist and a clinician uh, treating cancer patients is that in terms of uh, innovative treatment Bulgaria sits pretty well comparing to other European countries we have a very very good approval policy we try to shorten time for approval for innovative treatment but in terms of preventive actions uh, actions again uh, reducing uh, actions for reducing tobacco consumption alcohol consumption uh, air pollution and several others as well as preventive programs for uh, colorectal cancer cervical cancer lung cancer uh, these are the most uh, urgent actions we need to take and they they cannot be set without uh, all parties involved uh, um, getting together the great invitation for really preventive healthcare yes. with more focus on prevention and diagnosis along with the two important points you mentioned at the beginning unification on the and alignment on the on the direction and a lot of collaboration and sitting together around the table right right thank you so much dr abajif would you have any additional reflection on this point well um i believe that uh, the future of uh, Healthcare, in particular cancer care in Bulgaria, indeed is somewhere uh, between the two words you just said, collaboration and uh, alignment. So basically um, we need to, uh, to take this very seriously because uh, the plan is itself is a very structured document, but we need to start uh, start working on it and we need to to, to set higher goals and, uh, and to look into the future uh, because citizens in general and patients are expecting this from us. It's not only a matter of who is treating best cancer, it's not a matter of who is talking about cancer best, but it's the matter of complexity of the, uh, the care for, for cancer patients. This is the first, uh, the first point. And the second Point and I might ask you uh, for your answer uh, are clinical trials. Um, 
I've been involved with clinical trials for many years and I'm really happy to see that those clinical trials have been involved and now um, a pretty standard routine practice of uh, medication products we um, somehow um, evaluated assessing clinical trials. Now we routinely uh, use in particular immunotherapy, targeted therapies and so on. So what's your opinion? Uh, how, how about clinical trials in Bulgaria? Do you, do you encourage continue uh, doing clinical trials in Bulgaria? Do you see potential in clinical trials and do you encourage us medical doctors to more and more to, to get into clinical trials as well as patients? From industry uh, standpoint, I would say that Bulgaria is attractive for clinical trials in general and specifically for oncology clinical trials. I think moreover Bulgaria has the potential to grow even further in terms of clinical trials. Uh, usually when we assess the attractiveness of single country uh, for the clinical trials, we look into different dimensions. Some of them are the patient pool, so we have the right patient pool for, for such a clinical trials. We look into regulation, how the regulation in the country would help really to attract and streamline yeah. process for clinical trials. Usually we look into infrastructure, and the cost, what would be the cost structure of conducting you know, clinical trial in one country. And finally, and very important, is the expertise. Yeah. And I would say in, in, in Bulgaria, in terms of expertise, in terms of mindset, uh, in terms of having also history for clinical trials, we have really a, a bright spot in terms of expertise. My personal reflection that in order to really grow further in terms of attracting more clinical trials to Bulgaria, that we can build on the scientific interest of the medical oncology here and especially the oncology uh, community. Uh, second, we can build also on the harmonization we are seeing on European level and streamlining you know, the process across Europe. And finally, I believe there is a big opportunity with digitalizing the healthcare system. Yeah. which will make even the clinical trials in Bulgaria more attractive. Yeah, obviously uh, these are the, the, the multifacetal uh, profile of clinical trials because you also uh, touch base uh, on the digitalization, which is something, uh, again, making a parallel with the mission on cancer. Uh, this is uh, one of the priority of, uh, of my mission to uh, digitalize uh, patient, uh, cancer patient data and to digitalize processes in uh, cancer care. And it takes me to, to my next question. You've, been, you've worked in many countries and you're um, a great professional in, in pharma industry. What are the current trends you see from your point of view uh, in oncology? How, where the oncology is heading to? Oncology is always a very dynamic area, I mean full of, full of really opportunities and growth, at the same time definitely challenges. Uh, last year, for example, was very interesting if we reflect on 2022 and your last question was about clinical trials. So one thing that inspired me that we have seen growth of around 22% mm. in terms of clinical trials specifically for oncology and this is compared to 2018 for example. Mm. So we have seen kind of leap uh, post the COVID era. Uh, another dimension is the precision medicine. We have seen in oncology in the past years really upgrade in diagnostic tools, uh, upgrade in our ability to better understand the genomic profiles, the mutations, and definitely that gives the oncology community a better way to tailor specific treatment for specific uh, patients. We have seen also uh, steady growth in the trend of cancer immunotherapy, either BD1 or BDL1. So we have seen increase in the number of clinical trials. We have seen increase even in the number of indications. Uh, I've seen personally increase in some of the, what I consider near future treatment, like CAR T treatment, uh, CAR T uh, cells treatment. We have seen some start in, in hematology and now we see the moves in terms of clinical trials to the hematology as well. Uh, hematology and solid tumors, both of them. 
Uh, finally, and we mentioned already uh, digitalization of the healthcare system. We have seen uh, a positive trend in terms of telemedicine, uh, mobile applications, other elements of, of the digitalization of the healthcare system. And we are sure that those trends will really encourage uh, better patient outcomes, especially for our cancer patients. Sounds very encouraging, doesn't it? I mean, I, I lived in, in the time and I worked in a time where only chemotherapy was uh, available option for treating um, cancer patients. And uh, I'm really happy that in my lifespan and um, um, in, in my practice I see so innovative medicine and you even uh, uh, take me to the future uh, with, uh, with trends you outline. It's amazing we even haven't uh, said anything about artificial intelligence. I would say I was, I was wondering how this conversation would have looked like if, if, if there was a artificial intelligence uh, sitting uh, in a chair next to us, but probably this is a good topic for another interview. Definitely, artificial intelligence is also a very interesting dimension that hopefully will change, you know, the cancer yeah. care in, in a positive, you know, dimension. And uh, maybe we'll have two chatbots sitting yes. here in the state yeah. of each other, <laughs> asking and re responding to each other. Right. Maybe I have one final question to you, Dr. Arabjeev, having this insightful discussion with you and maybe reflecting also on your profile as an oncology leader. How do you find the time and the balance being a clinician, being a researcher, being someone who is really very passionate about uh, educating young oncologists and active in collaboration either in European uh, level or global level, how do you really find the time and the balance for that? Oh, thank you. It's a very good question. Saying like this looks scary to me either. I mean, um, for me, first of all, this is um, my own mission. I, I would like to I would like to develop personally, to develop further, uh, to, to overcome boundaries, to overcome obstacles. Second, I really would like to develop skills which, are, uh, which my patients will benefit. But it's not only patients, because I'm not working solitarily. I'm working in a fantastic team of doctors, nurses, in a great clinic. And I would like to lead by example uh, these people because they deserve uh, to, to, to see the, the best out of me. I cannot sit and, and wait or uh, just being stuck uh, in one place. I would like to be a multitasking person uh, because uh, contemporary life required you to be multitasking. You, of course, it's good to be expert in one thing, but you cannot keep your eyes closed for, for any other aspects of in particular in cancer care, but in life in general. So it's not easy, I, I have to admit, it's not easy for me. I still feel, I, I still have the strength to, uh, to keep going this way. And I'm really motivated because I already see the results out of efforts I put into, into all these tasks you outlined uh, for myself. Hopefully I'll, I'll keep this trend, hopefully I'll keep, the, keep this motivation and I'll keep the support which I receive from everyone, um, including from you uh, inviting me for such interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I will take from what you have said, growth mindset, very important for leaders, the support system, the team, the ecosystem that support and the passion, as you mentioned, for cancer care, that we will keep the resilience and keep doing the best we can for our patients. Thanks so much, Dr. Arabaji, for the time. My pleasure. It Thank you for the invitation. It was really great and, uh, and insightful uh, discussion. Uh, thank you again. And we look forward to, uh, to, to stay in touch and collaborate for, for really for cancer care and improving the cancer care pathways for our patients here in Bulgaria. Uh, thank you for being with us today because healthcare matters.